a series of break-ins, so when I was in high school, there were a few disturbing occurrences in my neighborhood, a woman down the street who lived alone woke up one night to go to the bathroom and heard her TV on in the living room. So she naturally wandered in there, assuming nothing out of the ordinary. She found a guy sitting on her couch, watching the TV. Started screaming, obviously terrified, and the guy ran out of her house, maybe a week later, further down the street, there was a family with a young daughter. She woke up in the middle of the night with her bedsheets pulled down and a guy tickling her feet. Again, started screaming, and the guy fled, another week or so later. Three houses down where an elderly couple lived, the husband woke up in the middle of the night to find a man standing over his bed and staring at his wife sleeping. The old man started hollering at the guy, and the guy fled again, so now SHT is on super high alert. Cops patrolling regularly, etc. They somehow figured out who it was, and everyone in the neighborhood got a flyer with his picture. Behind us was a densely wooded area that stretches for a couple of miles in every direction. This guy had been literally living in those woods for upwards of a month in a tent, doing God only knows what when he wasn't breaking into houses, but the creepiest part of the story is this, one night in the middle of all these incidents. We had our sliding glass door open with just the screen door behind it shut, this was in the summer. We had a big backyard and it was pitch black back there at night. Our dog suddenly jolted up and started growling viciously, like I'm talking tail stiff as a board, hair on his neck standing up, etc. Our dog was the best, nicest dog, like, ever. He never did that. So naturally we were like what the FCK. My father jumped up and put the floodlight over the deck on to see what was back there, but there was nothing, the next morning, we were outside doing yard work and noticed the lock on our back gate was broken. Someone had clearly done it, it wasn't like it was wear and tear or something like that. It's very safe to assume that this guy had tried to get into our backyard slash house but was deterred by my dog's growling slash barking. 15 tenths good boy. He wouldn't take no for an answer, he had seen me stumbling to my front door drunk and decided he'd try playing into my obviously altered state. I was young, so I still was unsure how to handle those types of males, and my birthday had just passed so when he gave me a hug, I assumed it was just a nice gesture. Then I tried hurrying off but he kept trying to come in and have a beer to celebrate more appropriately, he refused to take no for an answer, so I pretended like I didn't have my house keys to hold him off. I walked a little bit off to the side pretending to call someone who might have my keys, but I really called my cousin telling him how freaked out I was. He rushed over to get me right away, neighbor dude was in his 50s and I was 22. He didn't take kindly to my rejection that night and ended up poisoning my dogs later on out of pure pettiness. Crime scene next door, my dad lives in an apartment, and one day, he came home to cops outside of his door. It was very early, 5 o'clock or 5.30 a.m. They asked if they could ask him some questions, and my dad said of course, invited them in, and made them breakfast. They asked him some questions about his neighbor across the hall. Just general stuff like have you noticed anything weird, etc. My dad told him no, he looks like a well put together, 30-ish, year old businessman. My dad lives in higher end apartments, so this is what everyone looks like. Nothing weird or out of the ordinary, the cops go on to explain that a 30-year-old woman is missing and was last seen by a security camera walking into the building with this man. But they never had any footage of her, or him for that matter, leaving the apartment. The cops stay outside and monitor the apartment until about 5 p.m. that night when they finally get a warrant. They notice a shower curtain missing and golf clubs scattered on the bedroom floor. They end up arresting the guy, fast forward three weeks, and the cops find her body about 45 minutes south in the woods on the side of a bike trail. Some runner stumbled upon her. Nothing more was released on what state she was in, then about two months ago, they found more tapes, as the investigators went back to look at them. They discovered the man leaving the apartment with his golf bag. But like I said earlier, all of his clubs were in his room, I'm sure many people have put two and two together, a full-size woman wouldn't fit in a golf bag, but that's how he got her out. His trial is coming up. 
As of right now, he claims it was an accident and he panicked and tried to hide it since he had a girlfriend. Missing persons. I didn't really talk to him, but I'm pretty sure he did something to his wife and two-year-old daughter, when I met the wife I was maybe 10 or so. She was really sweet. The husband however was kinda sketchy. He had a very expensive car, and the only thing he would ever do was drive or wash it. Once, my friend and I were playing around outside in mid-June and he started to pull out of his driveway. My friend jokingly yelled out, why do you drive around so much? He replied, because driving is the only thing to do in this piece of s town. And sped off, but not before flipping us off, a couple of months later, the police came knocking. They asked my mom if she knew anything about the neighbors. Said that he and the wife had supposedly gotten divorced, and asked if we knew the whereabouts of his wife slash kid. We said no, of course, and they told us that apparently the wife ran away and they couldn't track down the daughter. The only thing we knew about the wife was that she had a two-year-old, was maybe pregnant, and that she drove a white jeep, a couple months later, the husband was cleaning his car, and my mom and I were leaving for an appointment, when my mom noticed the white jeep in the garage. If the wife had run off, then wouldn't she have taken the jeep? The dude saw that my mom had noticed the white jeep, and a couple days later, he sold it, at one point, we had gotten a package for them delivered to our house. So we went to return it. His house smelled like pot and the deceased, and we saw a gun on the dining room table. I really hope that it was a misunderstanding or something, and that the wife took the kid and ran as far as she could. Jackknife it down an icy hill, I worked for a company that owned a Caterpillar D9 bulldozer. It weighed over 100,000 pounds. They had to use a tractor, from the 1980s, with a drop trailer, to move it off the property. Both were functional and as safe as they could be but had seen better days, they asked me to deliver the bulldozer to another company, and I agreed. We loaded up the dozer, secured it to the trailer, and I was on my way, one of the intersections on this state route is notoriously bad. It's at the base of a hill, and if you're coming from the side the hill is on, you don't see the stoplight or traffic until you get over the peak of the hill. You still usually have plenty of room to stop. As I was approaching this intersection, my CB antenna lit up, and a guy was basically screaming into it for traffic at the peak of this hill to slow down. The problem was that my CB wasn't tuned, and I only caught about every third word, I let off the accelerator when I peaked the hill, mostly because I hated that intersection. I would have had plenty of time to stop, even with the road conditions if traffic was normal, unfortunately, traffic was not normal. There was a fresh, pretty bad accident at the intersection, and traffic had backed more than halfway up the hill. The accident had just occurred, so there were no emergency services on scene, I now had very little space to stop a very heavy load. With a very old truck. I started downshifting and braking, realized I was going to be cutting it very close, and started braking harder. Then I realized I was hitting large ice patches on the road. The tires were slipping and jerking the tractor around, I heard the fifth wheel clanking and I felt the trailer tugging on the tractor in a weird way, so I looked at my driver's side mirror and didn't see anything, including the dozer, in a panic, I whipped my head around to look up the passenger mirror and the only thing I saw was the entire side profile of the trailer and dozer. I had made a terrible mistake in letting the trailer get out from behind me. It was one of those whelp. This is it, this is how I die, moments, I was now jackknifing, while still moving and still trying to slow the truck down while on an icy hill. I was headed for an intersection full of stopped passenger cars, and my truck weighed a lot, by this point, I was thoroughly convinced that I was about to involuntarily murder a bunch of people. I laid on the horn as much as I could, but I was also trying to work the steering wheel in an attempt to pretend I had control. Honestly, I hit a point where I basically realized I was just a passenger standing on a brake pedal. I didn't have enough room to correct anything, so I just went all out on the horn, the trailer tires finally heated up enough to start making a very loud and deep squeal. There were a bunch of people in front of me that got out and ran away from their cars. They were basically staring at out of control death coming down the hill, the truck finally came to a stop within 3 feet of the last car in the intersection. I could sit on my truck's bumper and easily put my feet up on the car's bumper. 
The truck stopped with the trailer jackknifed, so I was blocking both lanes and the breakdown lane. I was sweating and was shaking from the anxiety. As I was sitting in the now stopped truck, the people who had abandoned their cars were now screaming at me and pointing up the hill. I looked up the hill to see another tractor, but a tank trailer, basically reliving everything I just had. With much less space to work with due to my trailer blocking southwest much of the road, I got out of my truck and ran away from it. The second truck slid down, stopped and parallel parked almost perfectly with my truck. Once his truck stopped, I could see he was experiencing the same thing I was. We were both extremely close to being in bad accidents. Thankfully, he was pulling a dry tank. I am pretty sure that's the only reason he was able to stop, he was running much lighter than me, by this time, the guy on the CB got through to enough truckers at the top of the hill that they basically slowed everyone down, once the adrenaline wore off, I almost passed out. I have operated a lot of different vehicles in my life. And that situation was easily the scariest operating situation I have ever lived. I had zero control of the situation, and that's a bad feeling for an operator. I remember the people that ran away from their cars were comforting me, it's been over 20 years since that happened, and I still get the willies when I think about it. Had I not been able to get that truck to stop, I would have ripped through all those passenger vehicles with little resistance. Another 5 miles per hour, or being in a different lane, just a bit more ice, even the time of day would have completely changed the outcome of that situation, it would have been entirely my fault, too, 